Hello students, my name is Moon and this is HE102, the hybrid class. But those of you listening at home and you are in the day class, I mean the, the fully in-person class, this applies to you too because we're here today to talk about the midterm, the second midterm. So you had one midterm and next week is the second one. So what a, how, how were you supposed to know that a second midterm was coming? It's been in the schedule since the beginning. So here you are in the Brightspace. You go to the syllabus module of your Brightspace account. And for those of you in the, in the in-person class, it's the same. You click on the syllabus and then you, and then when it comes up, it, if it comes up, you scroll all the way down to the bottom and you see the schedule. And you see that to, here we are today, November 1, the day after Halloween. I hope all of you survived. I hope all of you made it. And if you ate too much candy, it, you're allowed. Yesterday and this morning, well, I guess today is a special occasion. You're allowed to cheat on your diet. It's one of your cheat days. And then, but it's just that over the next several days, you just want to catch up. You know, you make up for it. So here we are, November 1. And we're going to talk about the um, exam, and that's why we're gathered here today. The actual exam is going to be November 9, published on Brightspace on November 9, and then it's due one week later, well, six days later, November 15 by 11 p.m. Same, same as the first midterm exam, same routine. And we're going to talk about that. So interestingly, uh, when I, in the homework six, I asked in the bonus questions at the bottom of homework six, uh, that I asked, what would you like different about this class? How would you like this class to be changed? And it doesn't matter if it's practical or not, if it makes sense or not, it's just anybody who has any thoughts about how to be different, what they would like changed, uh, here is your chance to say it. So it's surprising that some people didn't even take that opportunity. Some people just answered the 10 questions and let it go. So I, I don't know what else can I do to get more points into you. I can't force points down your throat or bonus points down your throat. I can just put it out there and then whoever takes it, takes it. Uh, some of you answered question, the, the, the last question, how to make it better with, oh, I have no, I have no ideas everything's fine, I like it just the way it is, then you didn't get credit for that question because you have to follow instructions. The instruction was say what you would like different. So if you don't say something, then you didn't get that point. That's, uh, you have to follow instructions. But anyway, most of you said I would like more, in, uh, no, uh, one of you said I would like to see, not in this class, but in one of the classes, one of these said, um, uh, oh, all right, I, I was about to tell you. Most of you, most of you said, I would like more interaction with the class, more, uh, among classmates. And so, yes, I understand you, I hear you, that's, I've been looking into it too. After all, the way I've been running this class, semester after semester, is the way I was, a I was treated as a student all in the decades that I've been spending as a student in one topic or another. And uh, the way I used to, the way I've always known it is uh, the teacher says, the student listens. The teacher teaches, the student learns. And that's pretty much how it goes. Um, if there are any questions, then the student is always welcome to go up to the teacher after class or by, by email, correspondence, or office hours and ask the question. So that's the way I always knew it. And then I took a, a couple of classes on like basically how to be a better teacher. And one of them was you need to make the class more interactive. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm game, I'm willing to do it, but I don't really uh, think like that. I don't really move like that. So I'm always open to suggestions so far, the things that other teachers and other topics have done, I don't know, I haven't really figured out exactly how they did it. 
And it's not only because of the subject matter, because with healthcare, which is like sciences, I thought in the sciences, it's just facts, right? I tell you the facts, you learn the facts, you regurgitate them on tests, and that's about it. Um, so I modified the homework assignments to make it a ch uh, your, ability, your chance to like tell me how you feel about it. Don't just repeat back to me what I told you, but tell me how you feel about it. And you've noticed that the homework assignment questions are like, what do you think? Do you think it's a good idea? It, was this accurate? Um, how, did you th how did you feel about the uh, source material, et cetera? So, but anyway, back to the topic, the, I mean the point, uh, which is that some of you want more interaction. And so on the discussion forums, and then you scroll all the way down, you see a brand new discussion forum, which is suggestions to improve class. And the idea is, do you have any idea how you would like to, and this is your opportunity. For those of you who want to see more interaction, here's a place for you to talk about. Now, because um, I know that some of you don't want to rock the boat, some of you don't want to make me feel bad, don't want to insult me, or you're just too shy, I made it so that you can be anonymous. But now, uh, I can't, um, I, I don't know how to make it default to anonymous. You have to opt in to anonymous, which means you have to click the checkbox to make it anonymous, otherwise your name will appear. For example, let me go into it here. And then you see that somebody has posted. So I'm unfortunately going to out you. Uh, I hope you don't mind. But here it is. So we can see your name because you didn't hit anonymous. Anyway, they, this person said they want more communication be, between classmates. So I, I said, of course, that's what I would like to do. And here are my answers. Um, for projects, for individual or group projects, it's a little late in the semester to make you guys do a project. It's, I mean, the semester's already two-thirds over. So it's not advanced warning enough because, you know, in the last quarter of the semester, you guys are going to be very, very busy because you have other classes to do, you have other final papers, other final projects that you or you were supposed to have been working on all semester. You've been kicking, some, not all of you, but some of you have been kicking the can down the road. Well, now we're running out of road. So the rest, some of you are scrambling. And the last thing you want from me is like a change in the contract. All the way in the beginning, I said, these are what you need to do to pass this class or to do well. So you can, I can't change the rules when the game is almost two-thirds over and say, oh, by the way, you have to do this as well. Um, why don't I make it an extra credit project? Well, we, you have extra credit projects, but that's something I can do. I can create like an extra credit for the final so you get extra points on the final if you want to do a project. But again, um, it's a little late for you to be like reaching out to your classmates, grabbing them, lassoing them into a, a group and then doing this because they have other things to do, right? It's, it's getting close to the end. They're already starting to scramble. Uh, they're under the time pressure now, so they don't want to hear it. So it's going to be hard. So, okay, I'll make an extra credit assignment for the final exam and I'll t make it a project format. You have to go do your research you have to write it up and all of that to get extra points for your final exam, which should be worth it because, you know, the final exam is worth 30% of your grade. So any extra points you can add on the final, you will probably appreciate. Uh, for communication in class, you have always been welcome to raise your hand and ask me a question in the middle of the lecture. Uh, the times when I did try to, and this is from the day class, the, I'm, I keep saying day class, the in-person class, there have been a couple of times where I, pa I stop lecture and I ask for participation in the class and then it's like pulling teeth. It's, uh, the, the class is just, here I am trash talking the in-person class, but the, getting them to answer even the most basic questions are, is like, is like a tug of war 
like pulling teeth and I have to like pause the whole, I have to bring the lecture to a screeching halt for five minutes trying to get somebody to say something. So you are always welcome to raise your hand and ask questions. Um, if you really want, I can pause more of, often. So inviting people to give their opinion on something. But um, it's always been there. Now, what about not in class, but outside of class, communication between your classmates? Well, that's what the discussion forums are for. So here, let's go back into the general discussion forums. There is, uh, say a little bit about yourself. That was the beginning of the semester. Uh, any comment about anything, you can put in the general or miscellaneous comments. Uh, there's been a thing about health and social media, which is you can uh, post something that you saw online that you found interesting or you wanted me to give an opinion on. But maybe I should have made it more clear that you are also welcome to po comment on each other. Now, one way to encourage you to comment on each other is what I saw in other classes I've taken when I was a student. I, I took several uh, graduate classes in public health. And there, the instructor made it so that you had to, po to respond to at least one other person in order to get participation credit. But you know what I noticed then? People were posting co responses to other people's posts just to get the participation credit. So the things they were saying were kind of inane. They were kind of um, filler. It wasn't really something they said because they wanted to say it. It's like, I have to say something, so I'll say this. So it was a lot of volume without much quality. It was a, a high noise to signal ratio. And so it's like, forcing people to move like a robot. You know, I, I must comply, I must comply. So I don't wanna do that to you guys. So I'm not gonna force you to reply to each other just because you want another point. It's just, as long as you post at least one thing in the discussion forums, then you're okay. And that way, the only people who post more are the people who really wanted to say something. So, and then here's the new thing, suggestions to improve this class. So um, you can always post something, a, a new thread in any one of these. And if there's anything that you want to post on a discussion forum, but you don't think it directly applies to any one of these currently existing forums, please let me know. I, I would like you to create a new forum about this. And as long as it's not, you know, out and out, uh, I mean, uh, completely, as long as it makes sense, as long as it is reasonable, sure, I can make it. It doesn't cost me anything. And so it's IT resources, but you kind of already paid for it in your tuition. So absolutely, you want me to make a new discussion forum about a new kind of discussion topic? Sure, I, I will make it so you can continue to communicate amongst each other. Now, um, what about outside of Brightspace entirely? You want to talk amongst each other outside of class, outside of Brightspace. Well, that's social media. Whatever is popular today. WhatsApp, is that still popular today? Do you guys still use WhatsApp? Does anybody still use WhatsApp? No. You, um, do you do it, do you use it uh, for socializing or because your class made you do it? Family oh, both, and family to communicate. Okay, I nice, nice. Cool, okay, so uh, somebody said that they use it to talk to family overseas because some, some social media platforms are more international than others. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so that's that. But you know what, um, I, I cannot be responsible for expanding a social media presence from this class. So you want to form a social media discussion group, then you do it on your own. Do not involve me. Uh, you're allowed to post a link to it, 
uh, like either general or miscellaneous comments or something, may, I guess, or here's health, whatever. You, you're allowed to uh, make your account, your group account, post the link to it, invite your classmates to join, but I will not join. I wanna make that clear, I will not join. And by, not, by me not being there, and me making it clear I will not be there, it's two things. First of all, that is a space that you are able to speak freely without any fear of instructor or school-based um, observation, surveillance, uh, feedback, or uh, revenge. So you are free to talk there freely amongst each other. Uh, and then the other thing is, by me making it clear that I will not be there, means that uh, the school and myself are not responsible for what happens there. If you insult each other, if you um, per perpetrate some kind of crime or illegal activity there, uh, you cannot hold me at fault responsible, you cannot hold the school responsible, because we are not there. It's a system, it's a platform that we have no control over, so we cannot be responsible. Just be aware of that. Let's see. Um, there. Oh, oh yeah, so um, there's still the fact that I can see the link. So what if I promise that I will not participate, but then I go and make like a fake account, a dummy account? an anonymous account, and then I join your group that way, and I secretly surveil your activity. What's about, what to stop me from doing that? Well then, what you can do is, um, whoever is organizing this, they can put an email, they put their email address, or some kind of burner email address there, and then only the people who they recognize, who respond to that email, will be given the link to register for the group account. That way, if I try to sneak in like a spy, that person will recognize, will not, not recognize my email account and say, who the hell are you? You're some troll off the internet and not give me access there. So that's, a way, that's like a layer of security for yourself. But that's just an idea. It's something I probably would have done if I were trying to make a little subgroup in a class where I'm a student. That's discussion forums. Any question on that? On oh, discussion forums? Okay. So let's go to why we're gathered here today, which is the uh, midterm exam. Let's go to, I made this sub-module for, I mean the module for your midterm exam, and for now there's just the study guide. Uh, by, the, uh, by tomorrow, there will be a video link to this lecture, the one that I'm recording right now. I hope I hit the record button. Okay, I did. The one that I'm recording right now. And then after this class is over, I will upload it to YouTube, and then by tonight, by the time I get home tonight, after I've had dinner, wash my face, then I will add that link here. And then by November uh, 9, Saturday, there will be this component here to actually take the exam like you usually do, as one does here. Okay. So let's click on this study guide. Voila. Okay. So just like exam one, it's 50 questions, multiple choice. Um, it's time for uh, uh, three minutes per question, so it comes out to 150 minutes, which makes it about two and a half hours. So you really should, just like exam one, you really should find yourself an oasis of peace and security and solid internet for about three hours. Whether it's at home, you kick your little brother off of their World of Warcraft account. I don't know if people still play that, but Fortnite, whatever it is, they kick kick your little brother off the Wi-Fi uh, and so that you can have uninterrupted and solid internet service. If that's not a thing, if that's not a realistic possibility, then come to school, come to the library, use one of their computers 
for three hours, which means don't wait until Friday the 15th, November. Try to do it through some other time during the week. So that way, if there's a technical issue or your dog ate your charger, then you can always try again the next day. So that's that. Oh, uh, the first midterm exam, I said it's 150 minutes, and then I forgot to enforce it. I told you that, but then I, I forgot to, talk, to check, click the checkbox that made you, forced you to stay under 150 minutes. So you notice, some of you notice that you can just keep on taking the test for like hours and hours and hours, and then not, it never kicked you off. It never closed the exam on you. I will, remember to, I will remember to do it this time. You will be held to 150 minutes. Once the timer runs out, you will be logged off and anything you haven't answered by then will be marked incorrect. For those of you who are, being, are registered with the Office of Accessibility Services, <clears throat> those of you who know who you are, you will be given a different time limit um, and uh, according to the accommodation <clears throat> that you are entitled to. I already know about you. The office already told me about you. I will uh, give you that other time limit. That's the, uh, and finally, back in the syllabus, so Mr. Heavy Breather over there, can you watch out? I can hear you breathing. The, the, yeah, the, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so on the syllabus, you noticed, you may have noticed that the mid, first midterm exam was only worth 10% of your overall grade. This second midterm exam is now worth 20% which is, the good news is that if you didn't do so well on the first midterm exam, you hear you didn't dig yourself into much of an academic hole. It's more of an academic pothole. So you, it's easy to dig yourself out. It's easy to crawl out. The 20% second midterm, a little more substantial, a little more significant, you should take it a little more seriously try to do your best. And now you know the way I ask questions. Now you know how the exam goes. Uh, so be aware of that. The, and then the final exam is going to be worth 30%, just so you know. Okay. All right, any questions about administration before we go into the topics at all? Right, um, so we are gathered here today to go to do this very thing, talk about the second midterm exam, uh, for which here is a study list. And so let me give you the standard disclaimer. The following is a list of possible topics. The following is a list of possible topics covered. Oh, the letters got really tiny. Can you see it now? Let me center, zoom in. There, the following is a list of possible topics covered. This is a study guide. It is not meant to be a complete or exact list of questions that may be asked. What this means is, if it's on the list, it doesn't guarantee it's on the exam. And there may be a question or two on the exam that is not on this list. And you may think, then why did you bother making a list? I made it as a kind of a checklist to make sure you have fully covered all the most important parts of the lectures. The whole thing is, all of it is important, otherwise I wouldn't put it on the slides, I wouldn't bother talking about it. But uh, some things are like the gist of why, like the, the TLDR or the, the main takeaway, the, this is the list of the main takeaways from these lectures that I really, really want you to carry away with you, hopefully long after this semester is over. The um, other classes that really grill you on the little details, I find students cram pretty much just so that they know enough to take the exam, and then like five minutes after the exam is over, they have flushed it out of their brain 
it's like, thank God I don't have to know this stuff anymore, and they move on with their life. I hope you don't treat this class that way, that the main things that I've been getting at, not beating you over the head with it, uh, are things that are directly applicable to your own health that and the health of your loved ones, people you care about, so you continue to think about these things or be aware of these things long after this semester is over as you continue to work on your own health. Um, so, throughout the lectures, things have been posted in bold font. Uh, so for those, I thought everybody knew, you guys are the internet generation, I thought you all know the concept of a font. And the, I, but I do get an email once in a while saying, what do you mean by bold font? So, as you look through the lecture slides, you'll see that some letters are extra large, extra dark, um, and that is bold font. Extra dark, that's bold font. And it makes them a little bigger too. So why? Because I was trying to draw your eyes to those word, letters. Why would I do that? It's something I wanted you to pay extra attention. So go as you're studying through the videos and the lecture slides, and you should do both. Do not think that just looking at the slides is all you need because there are some things I see on the video that is not on the slides that I will test on. What are they? I'm not telling you. You gotta watch the videos. That's if you either sit in the lecture for the in-person class or watch the videos for the hybrid class. Okay, so um, it's a study guide. It's not a list of questions on the test and it is definitely not a list of the answers because then why should I test you, right? So it's a study guide. Then how do you know? What's a way for you to make sure that you studied everything that is exactly on the test? Uh, well then study everything. That's pretty much it. Which is what I wanted you to do in the beginning. Um, have you now noticed that this list is in alphabetical order? What I did was uh, I went through all of the lecture slides. I didn't have to go through the videos. I, I made the videos, so I know what I said, and I and I uh, I made up a list of I brainstormed on all the things I want you to take away from this class and I made a raw list and then I put it in Microsoft Excel and I alphabetized it. Why did I do that? To make you look for it. I'm not telling, you can't tell from here which, which lectures each one is from. Oh, the lectures. The lectures are, uh, the exam is on lectures five through eight. On on lectures five through eight, because exam one was one through four, so this is five through eight, and the basic sciences lecture and videos. So there, I, sorry, I accidentally left that part out. Okay, this is, this is amazing that this is one good thing about Brightspace that the, it lets me modify files, or at least this file, in real time. Blackboard never let me do that. Let me get back in there now. Let me verify that the change was actually saved. There, yeah, it's it actually it let me f modify an uploaded file. That's convenient. So these are the lectures that you will be tested on, and and why is why wasn't the basic science video and lectures on the first exam? Why am I testing you again on the second exam? Because basic basic science, basic the foundation, the fundamental thing you need to know to get a grasp of not only this class, but also when you run into science or science-y 
claims on the internet or when your friend tells you or something like that. So you, I want to reinforce or emphasize that this is stuff you still need to know. So guess what? Basic science lecture and video will be tested on again in the final exam. Although now that I just said that, I realize the final exam is cumulative. So yes, everything is on the final exam. All right, okay, so the moment you've been waiting for, let's get into this. Oh, and also, as I said earlier, please feel free to raise your hand and ask a question about anything related to the class. I, w I wish you would. In fact, the purpose, the, another purpose of meeting together in person here is so that if anything has been bothering you since the last time we met, here's your chance to bring it up. So you're, to really get the most out of this class, you're supposed to come with questions and ask any time you feel it is appropriate. Abusive relationship signs. Do not get your answers out of Facebook or Instagram or your favorite social media influencer. Get it from the lecture. What are the signs of abuse? What are the signs that you're in an abusive relationship? Uh, active listening. How do you perform active listening? Because um, you can't just say, oh, I'm, I have ever done that, ever talk to somebody and that other person is saying, yeah, I'm listening. But then like two minutes later, you ask, so what do you think? And they go, huh? And it's, they were obviously not listening. So that was not active listening. How do you, let's flip it around. And so now when somebody's trying to tell you a story, how do you perform active listening? Because active listening has a couple of benefits. Not only do you actually hear and understand the story, but you also get to the behind the scenes. You figure out why they're telling that story, why they're telling it to you, and what do they hope to get out of telling that story. It's not just information transfer. It's why, what, do, why, what is their motivation to tell you that story in that way, so it lets you understand that. And then finally, it's it's so it's just uh, this not just but it is one of the ways to uh, strengthen a relationship the friendship relationship the work colleague relationship it's a communication exercise to strengthen social bonds that is active listening what's the difference between acute and chronic what's the difference between acute and chronic. Where is that? Well, I'm not telling you, you have to find it. Why am I making you do this work? Okay, so the point is that you, um, by making you work to find it, it's making your brain value it more. It's that simple, really. If I just tell you, then I might as well put baby food on a spoon and say, here comes the choo-choo and you you eat it, and you've, you've gained, I mean, you got the nutrients out of it, but you, you didn't eat it for yourself. So uh, you're not a baby, you're a mature adult, you need to work for it. By working for a piece of information, it makes you value it more. And it's as something as simple as that story of um, somebody went along the beach and picked up some very, very pretty rocks. Very, very pretty or seashells or whatever, something very, very pretty. So they thought, oh, this is uh, interesting. And you know what? There's a, tour, there's a tour group from the cruise ship coming through this afternoon. I'm gonna set up a table and sell it, see if I can get some money off of these tourists. So, but then they want to make sure they sell it, so they charged uh, 50 cents each. That sounds fair, it's 50 cents each. But then the tour group, the first tour group went through and they didn't, nobody bought it. Nobody bought it. Until finally the seller got this idea and all he did was changed it to $10 each. That's it, he just changed the sign so these pretty rocks are now costing $10. And guess what? He sold half of them. What happened? 
uh, to, well, what happened? The, the tour group, the people there, saw the number $10 and thought, huh, it must be worth something. And, and maybe one of them thinking like, you know, they're gonna try to negotiate, bargain it down. So, oh sure, the seller's gonna be like, sure, uh, what, do you, what do you wanna offer me? And then they work it all the way down to $5. And so the buyer walks away thinking, ha ha ha, I'm so smart. I got this valuable item for half the value, half the price. Uh, but the seller is like, what a moron. <laughs> I found this rock on the on the beach, and now I got five bucks for it. So, but um, what the point is that when you make something cost more, the person values it more. So by making you work for it, you value it more. Also, by looking for it, by going through the slides, maybe uh, fast forwarding through the video, you're you're allowed to fast forward for the videos. I understand. Uh, I do that too when I'm listening to other people's lectures. Just click on the speed playback and just set it to 1.5, 2.0, whatever you can handle. It's okay. I don't mind. I, I realize I talk slow. I thought I talked fast. I try to talk fast. And then I listen to my own voice and I realize, who is that guy? It's not me. Ever done that? Ever listen to your own recording and then not recognize your own voice? So uh, happen. I'm still not used to it. So anyway, um, as you're searching for this piece of information, you, find, you finally figure out where it is, and you've gone through other information to get to it, that's also part of the learning, the learning technique. Addiction. So yeah, we have an entire lecture called addiction, so I'm, I must be there. What's the biopsychosocial model, and why is that why is that worth learning? And the the short of it is that we're so fixated on just the biology of it. You're addicted because of this chemical thing process, and if we just take away that, you will no longer be addicted. Well, it's obviously not working, right? People go into the detox centers, and then they come out medically clear, but they go right into the addiction the following day, the following week. What happened? That person's psychological motivators, their social motivators to get addicted was not done, and nothing was done about them. It, it actually took a village to become addicted to something. It's gonna take a village to break that addiction. So that's one of the causes, the village. The village is the one of the causes of addiction. What are the others? What are the behaviors of addiction? What are the different kinds of addiction? I know I typed that in here. Somehow it, all right. Um, uh, there are actually two major categories of addiction, right? There is uh, the substance addiction, addicted to like a chemical, but there's another, ha another kind of addiction where chemicals, I mean the ingesting of chemicals is not involved. Does anybody know the name of that other half? Hand up. Did you need to leave? Oh, okay. It's like this is an addiction of like shopping, backward away. Okay, correct. So it's not addicted to substances, but addicted to doing something. But anybody know the name of that category? It doesn't, it does not start with an S, like substance. Like shopping, like gambling. You know that homework assignment I said, pick, an assign, pick a thing that is not mentioned in lecture, that is, addiction of behavior and a few of you said gambling like we talked about gambling in lecture so that person clearly did not watch the video and I got marked wrong you've had time to think about it what's the name of the term what's the term for that category of addiction where you are addicted to the behavior like gambling shopping uh, technology which includes internet and gaming 
um, sex, which includes porn. Um, so no chemicals have entered the system, but they can't stop. It's ruining their lives, exercise addiction, dieting addiction, work addiction. Still, what? No, it does not start with a B. Starts with a P. Letter P. All right, so uh, figure it out. And then by figuring it out, you go, oh, right. And that, uh, moment will help you remember it. Alcohol. If you're pregnant, don't drink alcohol. What? Progressive. Not progressive. Uh, alcohol. If you're pregnant, don't drink alcohol. If you might be pregnant, try not to drink alcohol because, you know, you, women don't realize they're pregnant until a month after conception. So while she is, uh, she is uh, imbibing away, like for an entire month, that embryo is being drowned in alcohol until she finally realizes she's pregnant. So if you might be pregnant, don't drink alcohol. And for sure, if you're trying to be pregnant, don't drink alcohol. Uh, alcoholism is bad, okay. Uh, but how is it bad? Angina is pain, pectoris is in the chest, so that's chest pain. Antagonist is a, a function of a drug. And when two drugs, one drug interferes with another drug. Do you have the answer? Okay, right. So the, when one drug interferes with the function of another drug so that it prevents it, prevents the other drug from happening, that's antagonism. Uh, atherosclerosis is a kind of arteriosclerosis. Why do you care? Why do you care? Atherosclerosis, why do you care? Okay, um, so we talk about behaviors in addiction, but we talked about behaviors already in, where am I? Yeah, let's go to, so when you zoom in to one screen, it zooms in all the screens, which is a little annoying. Let's go to, let me go to, uh, let me go to, Slowing me down. It's a slow. Eh? Where is it? Oh my God. How do I close this? So we. We talked about addiction, lecture five, uh, but we talked about be, um, uh, physical fitness and dieting, lecture two. So uh, behavior change is not just not being addicted anymore, but also you know try, doing whatever you got to do to be a better you. But it's easier said than done. You know, obviously, right? If it was easy to do, then everybody would do it and then physical fitness would no longer be a criteria of value that society seems to put on it. Society values things that are hard to do, hard to achieve. Uh, so what, what is it? Why is becoming a better you, exercising more, eating less, not, not using tobacco or nicotine products, why is it so hard to do? Uh, so what are these barriers to changing unhealthy habits? Basic science lecture, I already said. And in there, there are things like talking about the different kinds of biases. So review that. Not only do you want to know the different kinds of biases because you want to get a, a good score in this class, but you know, the world is full of biases. And here you are, here you are trying to make your way through life and not be manipulated, not be vulnerable to propaganda and not be swayed by unethical people, how do you protect yourself? Well, knowledge is power. Like knowing is half the battle, you know that meme. So how do you increase, increase knowledge about the ways people either intentionally or unintentionally give you misinformation? And that's bias. 
Uh, I talk. I don't really talk about these different kinds of cancers in detail in the video, but they are there on the slides. So if this applies to you, then even if you know, yeah, um, then go look it up, and then don't stop there, right? If uh, so, um, as a student in this class, you should be familiar with these, but if this actually directly applies to you, then go and educate yourself further. But when you are searching for these terms on the internet, always double check that the uh, source of the information is reliable. If, it's, uh, if the source, the creator, the creator of that website, the creator of that social media account uh, starts to give you a uh, sus that they are politically motivated or financially motivated, then you gotta watch out that that information, even though it sounds uh, truthy, uh, may, be modif may be skewed, twisted, spun to sell you something. So watch out. The categories of BMI, wait, the BMI, didn't we already do nutrition? Why am I asking it again? Well, BMI was mentioned again for chronic diseases, stroke cancer, diabetes, and BMI does play a part. Uh, there is a, but remember that there is a uh, controversy about the BMI. But then remember that that controversy really only applies to people on the edges of the bell curve the people in the middle of the bell curve, BMI is actually pretty accurate. It's actually a good overview or oversimplification of your health state for people in the middle. What bell curve? What's a bell curve? Basic science lecture. Codependence, you've heard this word all, all the time, right? In everyday life, in your social dramas, your soap operas, so uh, review that. Confusion here, this is a health class. It's the medical definition of confusion. It's not the general English definition of confusion. What is the medical definition of confusion? It's there, I spelled it out. Where did I spell it out? What should you do if somebody you actually care about is confused? Uh, congestive heart failure, don't worry about it. I mean, it's important, but beyond the scope of this class. You. Contraception. Okay, so uh, don't worry. Don't memorize too much about exactly the percent effectiveness for each one. Just look through it and see which ones are highly effective, which ones are un ineffective or poorly effective, so ineffective that you really should not use it for, for serious. For real, you really should not use it. And if you do, don't be surprised if you are now pregnant. Uh, withdrawal, the withdrawal method, the what you young people call the pull-out game, that is absolutely ineffective. It's no better than not using any attempt at all to prevent conception. And so that is horrible, horrible method. Um, be ready to be a new parent if you're gonna use the withdrawal method. The, uh, so like that. But now, the others though that are still highly effective but not so popular, why are they not so popular? What is it about them that scares people away or drives people away or just inaccess inaccessible to people? So that's that. Okay, dependence is um, drug dependence. So it's an addiction. Depressants uh, is a kind of drug diabetes, the disease, so uh, review everything <coughs> in the slides about, so not just what I said in the video, because I kind of rushed through it on the video, it also review now carefully what's said in the slides. Uh, these slides, every semester I keep adding to it, I keep, ref I keep adding slides to it, I keep adding nuance and context to it, and so even though I said the textbook is no longer required, not required, the slides are kind of expanding to be their own like mini textbook. So just like a teacher is saying, telling you to go read the textbook and let the textbook teach you, 
I'm kind of turning into a go read the slides and let the slides teach you. And the video lecture will be, as I'm skimming through them, just highlighting different things. So read the slides. Uh, so if you don't know anything about diabetes, no, I'm sorry, if diabetes has no relevance to you in your life or the lives of people you care about, then you are responsible for what's said in the slides. If diabetes is relevant to your life in some way, then you really should learn more detail than what's in this class because now it's you or your loved one. Drug misuse versus abuse. Didn't I already put that up there? Uh, all right. Uh, different types of drugs. Don't go too far into the detail. I'm not expecting you to know all of the street slang and how the drugs work. It's just the general categories. If efficacy it came, is a revisit from the first midterm exam. It uh, means uh, helpful. Uh, blood pressure categories of, you know what, just remember what is like the cutoff for like actual high blood pressure, hypertension versus like not yet. Remember that number. I'm not going to give you a number that's like right on the edge except for like one, or one point and then say which category is it. That's a little unfair. It's beyond the scope of this class. If you go and become an EMT or higher, okay, now you're supposed to know but not in this class. So don't, I'm gonna give you some number that is like way out in the, in like 911 territory or f uh, thoroughly smack in the middle, all the way nicely snug in the middle of normal. And now you're supposed to know, is it too high or too low? Uh, how to protect yourself on the internet. I'm hoping I am speaking, I'm not saying anything new, right? You young people who have been grown, who have grown up with the internet, uh, you've learned from er, very early on what things not to do. You've been telling each other, advising each other, but just in case you haven't, you review these. Uh, difference between ischemia and infarction, yeah. Yeah, because you're going to run it. If you do have a heart disease issue or, or somebody you care about has a heart disease issue, this word's going to show up in, your, in the doctor's note. So it's good to know the difference. Um, yeah, of course, no one is expecting you to diagnose the difference, but when a doctor or nurse uses the terms, you should know what they're talking about. What causes jealousy and also what do you do about that feeling? Um, it's human to feel jealousy. It's natural, it's normal. But in this, as a member of this modern society, you really should work on what you need to focus on is what you do about it. Do you act constructively? Do you uh, turn that feeling into something useful that will improve things in your life or will you use it to destroy things in your life? That's mindfulness, by the way. Uh, maintenance is the part of that behavioral change. Uh, so when once you have changed your behavior, whatever it is you're trying to change, then you don't just declare victory and then go back into the bakery or go back into the cake shop. You maintain where you are. Okay, congratulations, you made it to this point. You achieved your objectives. But now don't give it all away. Don't waste this, waste this accomplishment and fall back down. Just keep yourself at that level. That's maintenance. Uh, woman's menstrual cycle, how many days is it? Misuse and abuse. Okay, so I already, I did that. It's a duplicate of, of that. Misuse and abuse. So let me just clean that up, take out this duplicate, because having it separated out is nice. Okay, why is multifactorial? Uh, myocardial infarction, another term you may run into for heart disease. Neurotransmitters, um, just know that they exist pretty much. Uh, opiates, 
Okay, what is the life threat? And this is a homework question, and most of you answered correctly, but a couple of you missed it. So, so there are two, op two dangers of the opiates, which is that they cause lifelong addiction. That's a long-term danger, ruins lives. But the short-term danger is what? How does opiates kill the user if they overdose? They stop breathing. Yeah, it's, it makes them stop breathing, which is an immediate life threat. What should you do? Call 911. Oh, uh, about diabetes. Uh, most of you got that question correct, but a few of you, like a very few of you, answered, well, give them sugar. Um, it's, yeah, like mostly give them sugar and then see if they feel better. Uh, and then you didn't mention call 911. So I didn't give you the point. You have to say call 911 to get the point. If you have a friend who is, you know is a diabetic and now they're acting confused, you have to call 911. Uh, then by the time the ambulance gets here and they did have a a cup of orange juice and now they feel all better, the patient can always refuse transport. They can say, nah, I don't want to go to the hospital. Yeah, I understand. Here, give me the form. I'll sign it. I understand. I could die, but I don't think the, I, the danger is passed. I'm okay now. And then the ambulance will respect it, the decision, and go away and they will not be charged. Last I checked, they will not be charged because they refused transport. So it's better to have the ambulance there and not need it than to need an ambulance, but they're still not there yet because nobody called yet. OTC is over the counter. You don't need a prescription. Sympathetic versus parasympathetic nervous system. So sounds familiar. It sounds like something from the psychological lecture, which was the first midterm exam. Why, is, why do you need to know sympathetic versus parasympathetic? Because that's how drugs work. Oh, well, not all of them, but some drugs stimulate the sympathetic nervous system, and that's why people like it. Some drugs stimulate the parasympathetic, and that's why people like it. So that's why you should still know it. Peripheral artery disease. What's the, uh, that's a homework assignment question. How do you know you or somebody you, love, you care about has peripheral artery disease? What was the sign or the symptom, I guess, if symptom if it's for somebody else? Okay, you will look it up. Placebo, basic science lecture. Placebo is everywhere. Placebo is everywhere. It's not just happening in a clinical lab. It's everywhere. It's placebo is how con artists and fakers and liars and cheats trick you into buying their product. The more you understand the placebo effect, the better protected you are from buying just flat out junk, fake medical junk. And people, and. You, don't think you are immune. If you are a human being, you are vulnerable to the placebo effect. There may be even stuff you have bought in your life in the past because of the placebo effect. And, you may, and if you say, nah, man, I'm too smart for that. Nobody ever fooled me. Everything I've ever bought worked, works fine. I feel great. It just means the placebo effect worked really, really well on you. What is the placebo effect? How does it make you think you feel better even though the ingredient you just took is medically ineffective? So that's the placebo effect. Here's that word, process addiction for behavior that people are get addicted to for the behavior. So if you give up tobacco for a few hours, a few days, up to a year, a couple of years, you will have these benefits. What are they? 
uh, what are the risk factors for doing illegal drugs? Risk factors, uh, what are, so that is a modifiable risk factor when you intentionally take or not take a drug, that is a modifiable risk factor. Um, what are non-modifiable risk factors? Homework assignment, that was a homework assignment. Uh, sexual harassment is bad, but what is it? What constitutes sexual harassment? There was a slide on it. Silent MI is a heart attack, but the patient does not feel chest pain. They feel all the other things about a heart attack. They just don't feel the chest pain. What are the other things? Look it up. Uh, how long can sperm live in a woman's body? Why did I ask that? Five days. Why did I ask that? Well, it's part of that withdrawal method, the pullout game, that you, uh, you think you used it, but then you got pregnant anyway, and you're wondering, how did it happen? Well, this is how it happened. The sperm can live in the woman. And so what happens is, at the moment of erection, not ejaculation, but the moment of erection, some sperm already appear at the head of the penis. It's part of the process. So no, at the, the fact that it was, the penis was inserted, that alone will introduce that little bit of sperm into the woman. And then for the next five days, that little scouting team, it's not the entire army, it's like, like an advanced scouting team, has been moving up and down the fallopian tubes looking for the egg for five days. That's how she got pregnant, even though the guy withdrew in time before ejaculation. That is why the withdrawal method, withdrawal method is not effective. The three components of the Sternberg's triangle theory of love through which the three of them in various combinations can, can, can create all the other, all the other uh, kinds of relationships. Uh, steroids, there's two categories of steroids. Catabolic steroids, which suppress the immune system. Why do you want a drug that suppresses the immune system? Don't you want your immune system to always be on the top of their game to protect you? Why would you want your immune system to not be active? Uh, uh, look into it. And then there's the other kind of steroid, which is the anabolic steroids, which increase muscle mass. But if you do take anabolic steroids to make yourself look bigger at the gym and to impress other people, then you will have these side effects. What are they? Homework assignment was, what are they? Stimulants stimulate the sympathetic nervous system. Stroke. Homework assignment was look up the signs of a stroke and what do you do about it? I think all of you got that correct. Everybody dis correctly said face, arm, speech, time, and everybody correctly said call 911. Uh, synergy is a drug-drug interaction, the opposite of antag antagonism. Tolerance is a drug interaction. The more you take it, the more um, the more used to the drug you get so that you need a larger and larger dose. And the most obvious example is alcohol. The very first time you took a sip of alcohol, you got buzzed like that when you were a little kid and you snuck a little alcohol from your parents' cabinet. But now with some of you, it's gonna take the entire six pack before you start feeling anything so that you built tolerance to it. Uh, the leading causes of death uh, what are they? According to the CDC report from 2022, because that is the latest, that is the latest official list. Tubal ligation is a kind of contraception. What's the downside? What's the big downside of tubal ligation? There's two big downsides. What are the two big downsides of tubal ligation? Different kinds of cancers, tumors, uh, washing hands is the best way to reduce most infections. And then finally, withdrawal method is bad, don't use it. Okay, that is the entire list. Any questions? Okay, here was your opportunity to come with questions that was bothering you. For some reason, you 
too too shy to email me or quit it. Well, in that case, how about this? I will end the lec end the lec class today, and you guys are free to go, um, unless you want to ask me something in person. You know what? I'll even turn off the recording. So for those of you listening to me at home. Um, good luck on the exam. If you have any overdue work, please catch up on it because the late penalties are ticking away. But anyway, you'll see me in, a, in two weeks.